Hello viewers, I am BSSP Rajshekhar, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, Government Degree College for Women, Nalgonda. In today's video, let us discuss an important topic, coordinate systems, which has the basic steps in digitalization. So in this class, let us quickly recap the definition of linearly independent sets and basis, which are the prerequisites for this topic. And later we discuss the coordinate systems and unique representation theorem, which is very useful in framing the coordinates. Later we move on to coordinates of X related to basis B. And we find X when basis and XB is given in the form of some problems. Later we discuss about the coordinates of X related to standard basis E, which, which is denoted by E. And finally, finding XB when basis and a vector is given. So this is the today's class map. Let us first discuss about the linearly independent set and uh, basis quickly. An indexed set of vectors, set of V1, V2, and so on, Vp, in a vector space, V is said to be linearly independent with the vector equation C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus so on plus Cp, Vp is equal to O, the zero vector has only the trivial solution c1 is equal to 0, c2 is equal to 0 and so on cp is equal to 0. So whenever this vector equation has no solution other than the zero solution. So zero solution is obvious. If we take all the scalars as zeros Obviously, this will become a zero vector. So that will be in any case. If there is no other solution other than this zero solution, then we can say that the vectors used in this relation v1, v2, and so on, vp are said to be linearly independent. And if we can find a set of scalars with all non-zero such that c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus cp vp is equal to zero the zero vector we can say that the set is linearly dependent so in the case of linearly dependent vectors we can find a trivial non-trivial solution for this equation that is there exists some weights or scalar c1 c2 cp not all zero at least one of these is not zero such that this relation holds c1 v1 plus c2 v2 and so on cp v2 is equal to if we can find a non-zero scalar satisfying this equation then that set is said to be linearly dependent set and this relation is called linear dependence relation among the vectors v1, v2 and so on. And let h be a subspace of a vector space v and indexed set of vectors v is equal to v1, v2 and so on vp in a vector space v is a basis for h if two properties are satisfied. First one is v is linearly independent set and subspace spanned by B coincides with H, that is H is equal to span of B. So if B can span H and B is linearly independent, then we can say that B is a basis for H, which is a subspace of B. If we can find a set which can span entire V and which is linearly independent, that set is said to be basis for the vector space. 
So these are the points which we have discussed in our earlier classes. With these concepts, let us move on to today's topic, coordinate systems. So using these coordinate systems, we can able to convert the, we can, we can able to establish a relation between the vectors in a vector space. Vectors are nothing but objects. So those objects can be converted into some number system. This topic will facilitate us. So an important reason for specifying a basis B for a vector space B is to impose a coordinate system on B. So for a vector space B, there may be many bases. We can, we can specify a basis B so that we can construct a coordinate system relative to that basis. If B contains N vectors, the coordinate system will make B act like Rn. So whenever B has N vectors, our coordinate system is similar to Rn. So all the properties in Rn can be used in these coordinates. So vectors are behave like numbers. which will be very easy to transmit the data or any anything. If B is already R in itself, B will determine a coordinate system that will, that gives a new view of B. So if, if B is itself R in, then B converts into, B converts that system into new coordinates and it will give you a new look. Let us first discuss about the unique representation theorem. After that, we move on to some of the applications of this coordinate system. So unique representation theorem states that let B is equal to set of B1, B2, and so on, Bn. Be a basis for a vector space B. Then for each X in B, there exists a unique set of scalars, C1, C2, and so on, Cn, such that X is equal to C1, B1, plus C2, B2, and so on, plus Cn. So whenever B is a basis and X is an element of B, X can be represented as a linear combination of vectors in basis B in a unique way, with unique ways. For example, if we take two rupee coin and five rupee coin as my vectors, 20, can be made using these two in many ways. I can take four fives and zero twos. I can take 10 twos and zero fives. And I can take two fives and five twos. There are many ways in forming 20. But here, whenever B is a basis and X is a vector, this can be done in a unique way. There will not be many choices. So that is the theorem. So let us do it. Since B spans V, there exists scalar such that X is equal to C1 B1 plus C2 B2 plus so on C and B N. Holds. Let this equation be one, equation number one. It is given that B is a basis, so every basis has two properties. One, it is linearly independent. Second one is, it can span the entire set V. B spans V, that implies every vector 
x in b is a linear combination of these vectors. So as x is a vector in b, x also can be written as a linear combination of b1, b2 and so on bn. That means we can find some scalar c1, c2 and so on cn such that x is equal to c1, b1 plus c2, b2 plus so on cn, bn. That is our equation number one. That is our first equation. Suppose x has another representation. So now we have to prove that this is a unique way. So let us take a contradiction, contradictory statement. Assume that x has another representation, x is equal to d1, b1 plus d2, b2 and so on, bn, bn using these vectors. For some scalars, d1, d2, dn. Let it be equation number 2. Now I have to prove that both are same. There will not be two representations. That is our theorem statement. So I have assumed that there will be some other representation which will be proved wrong later or both will be equal. Then 1 minus 2 implies equation number 1 minus equation number 2 implies O, oh, 0 vector. On the LHS, we have x, x minus x is 0 vector, O oh, is equal to x minus x, and c1 minus d1, b1. So the multiple of coefficient of b1 is c1 minus d1, plus c2 minus d2, b2, plus so on, plus c2, this is cn minus dn. cn minus dn bn that should be so since b is linearly independent the weights in 3 must be 0 so since it is a since b is linearly independent so all the coefficients must be equal to 0 Otherwise, it is linearly dependent. So C1 minus D1 is equal to 0. C2 minus D2 is equal to 0. Uh, this should be Cn minus Dn should be 0. All the numbers must be 0. So, in general, we can say that Cj is equal to Dj. For i less than or equal to j, less than or equal to so C1 is equal to D1, C2 is equal to D2 and so on, Cn is equal to Dn. That can be written as Cj is equal to Dj for 1 less than or equal to J less than or equal to N. So I have taken two representations, but finally it became both are same, both the weights are same. So there will be only one representation. So I can say that there exists a unique set of scalars C1, C2, Cn such that x is equal to c1 b1 plus c2 b2 plus so on plus cn. So whenever x is in vector space and b is a basis with, with n vectors b1 b2 and so on bn basis of b there will be only one representation for each vector x in b as a linear combination of these vectors. So these C1, C2 and so on, Cn will be unique. So this uniqueness, these unique numbers will form our coordinate system. So as we discussed in the earlier example, the 20 rupees can be represented in a unique way if we select a basis. If the system is a vector space and we select a proper basis, that 20 will be represented in a unique way. 
that unique way can be converted into a coordinate system. So coordinates of x relative to basis b. Suppose b is equal to set of b1, b2 and so on bn is a basis for vector space b and x belongs to b. x is an element of vector space b. The coordinates of the x relative to the basis b are b coordinates. We can call them as b coordinates of x are nothing but the weights c1, c2 and so on cn such that x is equal to c1 b1 plus c2 b2 plus so on plus cn b1. Just now we have proved that these weights are unique. So those weights which are unique are called the coordinates of the x relative to the basis b. Or we can call them as b coordinates of x. So for each basis there will be different coordinates for each vector of course. So if b is fixed for each vector in b the coordinates are different. If the basis is changed, the coordinates of same vector x will also change for different different basis. So we, we call them as b coordinates. If I take another basis, yes, I will, I will call them as s coordinates. So each vector is now being represented by some set of numbers c1 c2 cn suppose that we have a chemical factory and some basic inputs some basic chemicals are my are the vectors in my basis. So then all the outputs which are formed by using the basic inputs which are now my vectors in basis are a linear combination of those vectors in basis. So those can be represented in terms of numbers. A real number system. I can call all the, I can represent all the chemicals using the scalars. Suppose H2SO4 is my first vector. HCl is my second, second vector. So if a resultant chemical will be formed by using uh, two units of H2SO4 and uh, one unit of HCl, then I will call that resultant uh, chemical as 2, 1. So 2, 1 will be my coordinates. So here the order of the vectors is also important. We need to maintain the order. So we, we, need, we should not change the order of the vectors in basis in the middle so that there is no ambiguity in the coordinates. So if C1, C2 and so on Cn are B coordinates of X, then the vector we call it xb is equal to these these weights can be represented as a column vector column matrix so it is n by 1 column matrix c1 c2 and so on cn is the coordinate vector 
of x relative to b. So this x b is to be called as coordinate vector of x relative to b or simply b coordinate vector of x b coordinate vector of x of course for some time for convenience we call it as xb but actually xb should be pronounced as b coordinates coordinate vector of x so the mapping x to xb xb is nothing but b coordinate vector of x is the coordinate mapping determined by basis b so there will be a mapping which will be 1 1 and r 2 we will look into it later so the xp the b coordinate vector of x is a column matrix n by 1 column matrix so these coordinates will be arranged in a in the form of a matrix and that is denoted by xb and called as coordinate vector of x relative to b or b coordinate vector of x note that the concept of coordinate mapping assumes that the basis b is an indexed set whose vectors are listed in some fixed pre assigned order so we should not alter the position of vectors of the basis once that was fixed so that there will be no ambiguity in the coordinate system so let us think about one more example so in our color printers there will be three basic colors nowadays yellow magenta cyan with the combination of these three colors we will get any color so these three are the vectors in my basis so assume that yellow is first one magenta is second one cyan is the third vector so if i want to have a yellow colored picture only yellow 100 zero zero will be the vectors for that will be the b coordinates for this for that vector yellow for magenta 0 1 0 for cyan 0 0 1 for red it is a combination of is yellow and magenta so some portion of yellow and some portion of magenta will give you red 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 are 110 which is equal to 110 so by by changing the numbers we can get different colors so we can send the message to the printer in the form of numbers so this process this is very useful in the digitalization process so nowadays even we can see uh, the paints are being mixed with these numbers different shades will appear using base color so so similarly any object either they may, they may be signals they may be chemicals they may be physical objects all of those are being called by us as vectors so their operations are now being converted into a form of rn what is the advantage of 
Rn. There will be all numbers in Rn. Whenever there are numbers, we can convert them into binary system. Then we can transmit it, transmit the data with light speed. So we can send commands. So the process of digitalization starts with this. The basic concepts are here. So these are the basic colors, red, blue, green. And with the combination of these also, you can get many colors. So you can take another basis also. Red, blue, green are my base colors. Then the coordinates will be different. For magenta here, the coordinates are 1, 0, 1, 0. Here, for this base, this will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So for different bases, the coordinates are different for the, for the same vector. Similarly, we can interpret these results to any set, set of chemicals, set of signals, or anything. Provided that you have to establish a vector space by properly defining vector addition and scalar multiplication in that set. Let us look into it by some more examples, some numerical examples here. Consider a basis B is equal to set of B1, B2 for R2, where B1 is equal to 1, 0 and B2 is equal to 1. So these two will form a basis for R2. Suppose X is in R2 has the coordinate vector XB. So B coordinates of X are given as minus 2, 3. Find X. So vectors in a basis are given and B coordinates of X are given. We have to find X. The B coordinates of X tell us how to build X from the vectors of the basis B. So it is minus 2, 3. That means uh, this is an ordered set. We should have minus 2 units of B1 and 3 units of B, B2 to form X. Which can be mathematically written as X is equal to minus 2 B1 plus 3 B2. That is minus 2 B1 is 1, 0 and 3, B2 is 1, 2. So now it is a simple mathematical matrix operation. That is equal to minus 2, 0 plus 3, 6. Which is equal to, which is equal to minus 2 plus 3, 0 plus 6. That is 1, 6. So 1, 6 is the required vector x. So that means the vector x, x is equal to 1, 6 is being represented by minus 2, 3. In the coordinate system relative to the basis B1, B2. That means B1 is a vector, you can visualize it. B2 is another vector, 1, 2. So to reach X, that is 1 by 6, 1, 6, you have to add minus 2 times this vector. Minus means you will be moving in negative direction. And then 3 times in this direction. The result will be this 1, 6. 
so this is the numerical example and this is one more find the vector x determined by the given vector given coordinate vector x b and the given basis b b is given as 3 minus 5 minus 4 6 x b is 5 6 so let the first vector is b1 and the second one is b2 then x is equal to 5b1 plus 3b2 that is equal to 5 times 3 minus 5 and 3 times minus 4 6 which will give us 15 minus 25 plus minus 12 18 that is equal to 15 minus 12 3 minus 25 plus 18 minus 7. So this is the vector x which has this which has this coordinate with respect to b. So R, this can be done in a different way. We can form a matrix B1, B2 and we can multiply that matrix with this xb the coordinate vector b coordinate so that is we are forming a matrix using these two columns and we are multiplying this with xb after matrix multiplication we get this same vector 3 minus 7 so this is a this is another way of finding x so let us find some more examples some more live examples using our excel lab so here we have some exercises these are this is the basis and this is coordinate vector b coordinate vector of x so this is my b1 3 minus 5 and minus 4 6 is the second vector and this is xb 5 3 and we can get instantly the value 3 minus 7 will be the answer by simple programming. So here observe that this first vector b1 is being multiplied by this first element 5 and the second vector is being multiplied with this 3 and this is the resultant vector 3 minus 7. So here the formulas are 5 multiplied by 3 plus 3 multiplied by minus 4 that is equal to 3. Similarly this one also. So this is a way. This is another way. A matrix is formed here using these three. Using these two columns. And this is another matrix. These two are being multiplied. So this matrix is being multiplied with this one. So another 2 by 2 and 2 by 1 multi matrix multiplication result will be 2 by 1. So the same result appears 3 minus 7. So if I have to find the solution for the second problem that is 3 and 2 and minus 4 and 1 and the 3 coordinates are minus 2 5 so now the result is minus 26 and 1 
Let me give the values of not mapped. You can see minus 26 one. That is the resulting vector. So you can change any value. So you can find any any x, any two by one x using this simple program. So I can put my my basis is four two and minus four seven is my basis. And some coordinates one, three are given. The result and vector will be this one. So you can easily construct a simple program so that you can understand the behavior of the vectors. We can extend this one also. This is a simple one, two by two one. But we can extend this for these two problems. We can extend this one. So let us take three by one. Vectors. <coughs> now for this third problem, b is equal to 1 minus 2, 3, 1 minus 2, 3, 5, 0, minus 2, third one is 4 minus 3, 0. And xb is given as 1, 0, minus 2. So this is the resultant vector x. Instantaneously we can get this by by simple program. So here the first vector is being multiplied by this first component, first row element, one, and the second vector is being multiplied by this zero, second row element, and the third vector is being multiplied by this one. So this is the result. So this is another way. We can form a 3 by 3 matrix using three, these three vectors and which can be multiplied by x. After matrix multiplication, we get these values. So similarly, we can find the solution for the fourth problem also. Minus 2 and 2 and 0. That is the first, that is my first vector. 3, 0, 2 is the second vector of the basis and 4, minus 1 and 3 that is the third vector and B coordinates are minus 3, 2, minus 1. So 8, minus 5, 1. This is the resultant vector. So same, similar thing. First vector is being multiplied by first element, first row element. Second vector is multiplied by second row vector, second row element. Third vector is being multiplied by third row element. The, the result, resultant vector will be the x. So you can change anything. If, if the basis is changed to some some other vector, the coordinates will change. Similarly, you can extend this to, to any other. So the calculations will be done like this automatically. Of course, there will be softwares like MATLAB in which very big calculations will be done. But by doing yourself a little bit of programming, you can understand how the values will come, how to program such softwares. So let us go back to our PPT. So, we have seen how to find x, vector x, using the vectors given in the vectors of the basis and b coordinates of the x. 
So coordinates of x relative to standard basis. So the entries in the vector x is equal to 1, 6 are the coordinates of x itself relative to the standard basis E that is equal to E1, E2. We know that E1 is 1, 0. E2 is 0, 1. So for, for R2, E1 is 1, 0. In Rn, E1 is 1, 0, 0 and so on, 0. There will be n entries. n minus 1, 0 and 1, 1 in the first row. So that is the standard basis. So if we write a vector x, 1, 6 in terms of a standard basis, the xb will be equal to x. Here that b is, is denoted by e of course. The standard basis is being denoted by e. So instead of xb, I, am call, I will write it as xe. So e coordinates of x, standard basis coordinates of x is nothing but x. Since 1, 6, the, for example, the vector 1, 6 can be written in the form of 1 into 1, 0 plus 6 into 0, 1. This 1, 0 is nothing but E1. This 0, 1 is E2. So 1 into E1 plus 6 into E2. So the, the scalars are, the weights are 1 and 6. So the E coordinates of x are again 1 and 6. Whereas x is also 1, 6. So, the coordinates of a vector x relative to the standard basis is again the same vector. In Rn examples, of course. Let us move on to one more problem. Here x is given, xb is to be find out. We need to find the b coordinates of x. Let b1 is equal to 2, 1, b2 is equal to minus 1, 1, x is equal to 4, 5, and b is equal to b, the basis is equal to set of b1, b2. Here b is the basis. Find the coordinate vector xb of x relative to So, B coordinates, let us assume that B coordinates are C1, C2. Then those coordinates C1, C2 of X satisfy this equation. C1, B1 plus C2, B2 is equal to this X. So, here B1 is 2, 1 and B2 is minus 1, 1. X is 4, 5. R this can be written as in the matrix form 2 1 minus 1 1 into c1 c2 is equal to 4 5. If you multiply these two matrices you will get this relation 2 c1 minus c2 that is nothing but this one 2 c1 minus c2 is equal to 4. That is the first relation in this equation. Similarly, C1 plus C2 is equal to 5. That is the second relation in this form. So both are equivalent. So now the problem is reduced to finding this C1, C2, the matrix equation. Now we can construct an augment matrix B1 with B1, B2, X. So now I am forming a matrix using B1, B2, X. B1 is the first column, B2 is the second column, X is in this one. Now we are going to reduce it into echelon form, particularly reduced echelon form so that C1 and C2 will come out automatically from that matrix. So this is, this is the matrix form, augment matrix. Now it is being made 0 using this one. So R2 goes to 2R2 minus R1. That will be given this one. Later 
here we find 3, 6. I can divide the second row by 3 with 3 so that I can get 0, 1, 2, 3. And using this one, I, I should make it 0. I can add both zeros so that I can get this. Now, in a, in a reduced Declan form, the leading entries must be 1. So I am dividing it 2. So 1, 0, 3, and 0, 1. Three. Now, these are the solutions for C1 and C2. So now C1 is 3 and C2 is 2. So these are the coordinates. So x is equal to c1 is 3 and c2 is 2. So x can be written as 3v1 plus 2v2. So 3, 2 is my xd. So b coordinates of x are c1, c2 that is 3. Geometrically, this can be viewed as this one. Here you can observe that B1 is 2, 1. So it is 2 units left. So X coordinates is 2 and Y coordinates are 1. So the point is here. So the vector B1 is this one. This is B1. And B2. B2 is minus 1 and 1. So X coordinate is minus 1. Y coordinate is 1. So B2 will be here. So this, this vector represents B2. And x is 4, 5. So x coordinates is 5, y coordinates is 5. x coordinate is 4, y coordinate is 5. So it will be here. So the ordinary coordinates of x are 4, 5. Now we have to give the b coordinates of x. So using these two scales, this is a new scale. Using these two vectors, I need to measure this one. I need to give new coordinates, new numbers this vector. So to reach here, I need to use this B1 three times. One, two, three times. And move in this direction, in the direction of B2, two times. So that X is reached. So now the coordinates of X in terms of B1 and B2 are 3 and 2. So 3 B1s and 2 B2s are needed. So the coordinates of x with respect to faces b are 3, 2. That is what we have proved mathematically. So this is the geometric representation of this one. Let us do some more examples. There are a lot of four examples b1, b2 is given, x is given, xb is to be find out. Similarly, here vectors of 3 by 1 are given. Let us calculate all these problems using our Excel lab. Let us go back to Excel lab. So this is my, that is the problem carried to here. So first one is 1 minus 2 and 3 minus 5 x is minus 1, 1. So the, the solution is as, uh, uh, as per the procedure we have discussed in the previous problem only. So, but here I am giving the numerical value just to the numerical so I have formed a matrix using these two columns, that is this one. And this is X. I have prepared an augmented matrix here. This is the augmented matrix. Now I am converting this into a clone form. This is being automatically converted into a clone form. This is equivalent to this one and equivalent to this one. Finally, this was in this shape. So this is my C1 and this is my C2. So these are carried to here. So this is the 
xp that is b coordinates of x are 2 minus 1 so we can get this automatically with simple programming so now i can see 1 minus 4 let us check whether it is correct or not so as per our previous problem let us go back this is our previous problem these are the vectors in basis and this is my xb 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is carried here and this is x as per our previous method whenever xb is given i can find x so that is again minus 1 to 1 which is used here so the process is correct i am checking it so similarly if i took the second problem minus 4 and 2 minus 3 and x is minus 1 minus 6 xb is 3 2 again this is in this is augmented matrix using these three vectors that is converted into a clan form finally it came to this form 3 and 2 are the coordinates 3 and minus 2 are the c1 c2 those are the elements in my xb so you can check it again so i have to use these two and this xb to get this one using our previous example so those are carried to here and finally i got minus one minus six so let us quickly move on to three by three model also so this is already here the fourth problem is there one one three two five eight no this is two zero eight two zero eight one minus one three zero zero two So my xb will be 1 minus 1, 1. Again, the augment matrix is formed using these three vectors and this x. Now it is being converted into a clan form. Finally, it came to this position. Now this is c1, c2, c3. This is carried to here. So by digitalizing the process, this is the process of digitalization. So the vectors are being converted as numbers. Even B1 is a vector with those with the characteristics of those vectors, I can convert that into some R and form. For example, I am dealing with a set of pens. The first characteristic will be whether it has a refill. If yes, I will write one, otherwise I will write zero. Second characteristic, whether it has a cap. If yes, I will get one, otherwise zero. Third one is what color? Color of that pen. I will give some numbers. For white it is 10, for black it is 15, for red it is 20. I will fill that numbers. So all the objects can be converted into numbers. Once that is converted into numbers, I can perform all these operations. So instantaneously you can find the vectors, vector x whenever xb is given and you can find xb whenever x is given. Similarly you can find this, this third problem also, minus 1 and minus 3. And this is minus 3, 4, 9. This is 2 minus 2 and 4 my x is 8 minus 9 and 6 so xb is the coordinates of x are minus 1 minus 1 3 so the coordinates of our x change with, with respect to these vectors that means to get this one these weights are to be used using these vectors so this should be used minus one times, this should be used minus one times, this should be used three times so that I can get this one. So if these three are my colors, these are my weights to get this one. 
so i can check it again so this b1 b2 b3 and xb xb is carried to here and it's a matrix multiplication that will give you 8 minus 9 6 that is in our vector x so that is checked so we can do some more experiments in excel lab by constructing some formulas of course these are the formulas and constructing and converting into a clan form we need to practice it these will be helpful in programming also so let us go back to again our ppt so with this I am concluding today's class. Thank you for watching.